Hello there guys, Fusion here. A year back I made my Tentabrella guide and planned to make more, but I couldn't find the time to make more due to some personal issues. Uh, I think I'll be able to get into a regular schedule of videos soon, so you can look forward to that. But anyways, today we're back with another guide, this time on the Blob Lobber. When it was first released, the Blob shredded the Raymaker Shield, Brellas, and basically everything that wasn't a player, and because of that it was pretty popular. Some minor nerfs toned down some of these aspects, but the Blob Lobber remains a very solid weapon that fills a unique but sometimes niche role on teams. The main weapon shoots volleys of 4 shots, each of which does 30 damage, so you'll need 4 hits to take someone out. Size doesn't really matter when it comes to these blobs. The bullets disappear after a short time, and can also bounce off floors and walls as we'll see later. Let's talk about some of the main strengths of the Blob Lobber. The Blob outputs a monstrous amount of paint, especially when boosted by main power up. Its paint output can make it difficult to approach, despite its main weapon not seeming threatening. As a trade-off for this painting power, it can be hard to focus the painting on small areas like splat zones. Rather, most of the Blob's paint comes from the long, narrow paths that the main weapon creates. To best take advantage of this and be able to pressure areas without putting yourself in danger, longer maps work best for the Blob. On the other hand, Blob has some exploitable weaknesses. It can be extremely difficult to hit all four shots on a moving target, and the slow fire rate makes it easy to be rushed down, particularly from the sides. While Blob has a great time pushing up over walls and hills because of its ability to arc shots, it has a difficult time descending, especially over sharp edges. Blob has no tools to deal with an enemy sharking on a wall, besides a lot of patience. If an enemy pops above a wall and you weren't expecting their appearance with a volley of shots, it's usually game over. Perhaps the most important aspect of the Blob is to learn how to approach 1v1 situations. A bad habit that a lot of new Blob players get into is overly passive play. They start out playing Blob like an aggressive weapon, but quickly realize that they can't win their close range fights. Because they discount close range as an option, they feel they need to stay far back. You've probably seen this in a ranked before, uh, where you have a blob on your team that hasn't left the snipe the entire game. They're painting a lot, but that's not enough to force the enemy back and prevent their inevitable pushes. Learning what fights to take and how to position will level up your blob play. Players who like to set up camp in a spot with blob aren't necessarily wrong though. Since you can't reliably win close range fights, you have to get into positions where you can abuse your range. So, to push up with Blob, you need to learn how to spot checkpoints, places that are safe to push to at the moment and easily defensible. In other words, you're trying to act like a moving fortress. Get into annoying positions for the enemy and stick there until they force you out. Take for example, the mid area of Manta Maria. Your Blobs go through grates, so you can't really push top mid if it's being watched. But, if you can get onto the grates while nobody's there, you have line of sight on almost the entire middle of the map, and anyone who wants to push you is going to have a hard time. If it zones, you'd likely want to stay there, but other modes require your team to push. From your position on the mast, you can watch over a rainmaker, tower, or power clam, pushing through the alley and protect it from people on all sides. When it comes to actual 1v1 fights, you generally want to keep your distance. Like a blaster, your best chance in a 1v1 is either spacing out enemies from a distance, or one volley killing them from point blank. Mid-range fights are the worst case scenario for Blob, as enemies can move a significant angle relative to you, making them more difficult to hit, while their weapons and subs can still reach you. If someone does approach you, use your surroundings to try and lure them close into a corner or narrow area. Situations like these are the perfect place for Blob to take advantage of its unique ability to bounce its shots. In general, Blob is not a weapon you should be chasing people around corners or edges with. The weapon fires slowly, and it can be difficult to hit all four shots against a moving target. In close range encounters, you usually only get one opportunity to kill the enemy. In these situations, try to take advantage of that geometry class you used to take. Remember, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Especially if you don't know exactly where the enemy is, you should look in your surroundings for walls that could bounce shots in their general direction. 
Bank shots are quite difficult for enemies to predict and quickly avoid, but more importantly, they can bounce blobs past the same location in rapid succession. They pass it on their way to the wall, and they pass it on their way back. This can act like a wall of bullets to enemies, since they won't be able to pass through that point regardless of their timing. This tech is incredible in narrow corridors like the ones in Port Mackerel, the area between the boxes on Maku Mart, and plenty more. Something I love doing with this tech is to force enemies to stop sharking corners. By bouncing blobs first to the corner, then slowly along the wall away from you, you pressure the enemy back little by little. Using this strategy can help turn rushdown situations on their head. In addition to scouting for enemies with your blobs, this can also limit their options by preventing them from moving in a certain direction. By narrowing the enemy's options, you start to know exactly where the enemy will be when they pop out and can prepare accordingly. Gear abilities play a big role in making the blob lubber viable. No weapon can take advantage of thermal ink quite as well as the blob. Spraying bullets and hitting the enemy even once marks them and gives you the upper hand in a 1v1 situation. You can use this mark to lead your shots even over walls and control the enemy's movement. Main power up boosts the painting power of the blob, while ink saver main lets you keep up sustained pressure. Both are solid options that devote themselves to the main weapon strategy. I like to run just over a main of each in addition to thermal ink. The rest of the kit is generally up to you. Like we talked about earlier, long maps are great for the blob to take advantage of its painting power. In addition to that though, maps with small changes in elevation that blob can shoot up at let you easily force enemies off of the high ground. For example, the stacks on Makumart are perfect for a blob to sweep clean of enemies. Surgeon Shipyard on Clamblitz is another of my favorites, as the bump in the middle of the map lets you pressure over it while hiding you from line of sight. Maps like Mori Towers don't work as well for the Blob Lubber because of their excessive verticality. The Blob has a hard time moving quickly to attack the high ground, and even when it does have the high ground, its bouncing shots are nearly impossible to land from directly above. Both the Blob Lubber and the Deco have their merits and downsides, so you can adjust your picks based on preferences and modes. The Vanilla Blob is able to use its splash wall to hold its ground easily, especially when faced with backliners like snipers. You want to use this blob if you're aiming for the moving fortress playstyle we talked about earlier, where you make your way into annoying positions and be a nuisance to give your team space. The Inkstorm gives you a second wind for when you feel like your hold down a position's weakening and lets you turn up the aggression. For example, the blob can't entirely defend this spot on humpback on its own, so when the team most needs it, you can turn the paint and momentum in your favor. The blob blobber deco certainly leans more into the painting strategy of the weapon, with the Sprinkler Sub and Bomber Special, the weapon has a slightly easier time painting splat zones, but has a harder time defending itself overall. I tend to favor the Vanilla Blob in general, but use the Deco from time to time. And that about covers it. Overall, Blob Blobber is an excellent support weapon that makes up for what it lacks in kill power with a plethora of paint and tricky trajectile triangulation. I'm Fusion, and thanks for watching.